give us. Thank you, Lord, for every breath that we draw. Thank you for our home and our friends and our families. And Lord, thank you that you are the one that holds us tight, that provides for what we need, and that knows our hearts. And so, Lord, as we give you these gifts, we know that they can be multiplied in your name. And we know, Lord, that there are others in our community that need to hear about you. And so, Father, we just pray that these gifts we bring, the money, ourselves, our gifts and our talents, will be used so that others will come into your kingdom too. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, worship team. Please be seated. Simon, you're up. You see, Jesus didn't just come. You see, Jesus didn't just come for the covenant people. No, Jesus came for you. He came for me. He came for the world. Welcome to our Sunday service at Midstream Methodist Church. We would like to continue with our annual tradition of asking for donations of used, in good condition winter coats and blankets. These will be given to those in need of an extra layer of warmth this winter. Collection crates will be in church for a few weeks for any donations of clothing. Join us for life groups on Wednesdays. There are group meetings at the church starting at 1845. That is quarter to seven in the evenings. Hey kids, Friday fun is back every Friday at 5 p.m. All grade ones to sevens are welcome. And please remember to bring a friend along. Friday Youth also takes place every Friday at 6.30 in the evening right here at the church. All teenagers between 13 and 19 years are welcome. The new confirmation parents meeting will be held on Sunday the 5th of May after the 9.15 service right here at the church. For those interested in Microsoft Excel training, please complete your details on the sign-up sheets in the church foyer or follow the link on the church WhatsApp group to register. Training will be presented by Joe Baker in the Youth Hall on Saturday the 4th of May from 8.30 in the morning to 12 noon. The cost will be 300 Rand for the training and there is space for 20 attendees on the first course, so book your spot soon. We would like to invite those who are able to serve to volunteer for Welcome Steward and Sound Duty Service. Please contact Bronwyn for further information. This Sunday's flowers are donated by Joseph Klobler in celebration of his wife Renee's birthday. Happy, happy birthday, Renee. Just a reminder 
that we have a card machine in the foyer for easy transactions like tithes and payments for any of our church events. Please don't forget to follow, like and share our Facebook and Instagram pages at Midstream Methodist Church. Here's wishing everyone a blessed Sunday and week ahead. to give a, an indication that you're praying for somebody specifically, please do so. But please join me as we pray for others. Father God, thank you so much that we are able to come here and pray to you. Thank you, Lord, that you are the one that, that hears our prayers. And we know, Lord, that each person standing this morning stands up for somebody, either themselves or for somebody else. And Lord, we know that you hear the, the prayers of our hearts. Lord, this morning we bring to you those who have been ill in the last week or two. We bring to you those that are still recovering, those that are in hospitals, those that are awaiting surgery or dealing with long illnesses, Lord. And we just pray that you will give them an extra handful of your grace this morning and they will know your presence with them. We pray too, Lord, for those caring for the sick and the ill. Give them your strength and your compassion too. We pray this morning, Lord, for those who have been bereaved, for those who still feel the, the loss and who know that they need to move forward. But, Lord, it's hard, and we know that you can be there with us every step of that journey. And so, Lord, we bring to you those who have been bereaved in our community. Father, we bring to you the leadership of our country. We bring to you each person who holds a position of influence, and we pray, Lord, that you will be the one that influences them. Lord, we know that your, your people, your Christians, are all over the government, and Lord, we just pray that you will give them your strength and your guidance in every situation that they are in. We pray too, Lord, for the leaders of this church. As things have changed a bit and as, as we move into a new season, Lord, we just pray that you'll be the one that guards us and guides us along our way. Lord, we pray for our children, who are in our homes, we pray for our parents and the marriages in this church, Lord. We just pray that you will strengthen families because you are the one who, who brought us all together, Lord. We just pray that you will be the one that guides us. And then, Lord, last but not least, we come to you for ourselves. And, Lord, we know that we have done many things in the week that has passed that have hurt you. We have sinned, Lord. We have done things that we know we really shouldn't have done and we have not done things that we know we should have. And Lord, we come to you right now and we humbly ask for your forgiveness. Father, we're sorry for those things that we have done. And Jesus, thank you that you are the one that, that paid for those sins for us. And we can now rejoice and carry on worshipping as a forgiven people. Thank you, Lord God, for your forgiveness and for your love for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated, if anyone isn't. Right. So today we're going to be looking at the vine and the branches, which is a passage from the book of John. We've spent a little bit of time looking at, um, at Easter and the resurrection and when Jesus appeared, and now we're moving on a little bit and looking at some other things that Jesus said to his disciples. So our reading comes from the book of John, chapter 15, verses 1 to 17. And Jesus' words are these. I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit he prunes, so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine." Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me, I in you, you will be much, bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up and thrown into a fire and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. 
This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. And then he goes on to say this. He says, As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I've kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. I've told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than to lay his life down for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends for everything that I've learned from my father, I've made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you. Listen to those words. You did not choose me, I chose you. And appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit with, that will last. And that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. This is my command. Love one another. So how many of you have ever eaten grapes straight off a vine? My aunt had this grape vine in her back garden. You know those very dark black grapes? With that little green thing that kind of plops out? I don't know what they're called. Pardon? That one. Okay. <laughs> so as kids, we always used to go and visit them on a Sunday afternoon, and the mommies were talking, and, and we would run off to the vines, and half the time those grapes were still too green. And we shouldn't have picked them, and we shouldn't have eaten them, but we did. And it, we all ended up with funny tummies for a week. But that was what it was like, just to go and eat those fresh grapes. How many of you have ever taken a bunch of grapes and just eaten one? Anyone? No. <laughs> We eat grapes in handfuls, in bunches, because that's what it's like. So as we look at what God says to us about him being the vine and us being the branches, bearing the fruit, we just bear those pictures in mind. So today we find ourselves in the book of John again. We've been going through the book of John quite a bit recently. And just to sort of recap and, and give you an idea of where this conversation happened, in chapter 13, it's all about the Last Supper, where Jesus washed his disciples' feet, he predicted his betrayal, and then he gave his disciples a new commandment. And that commandment was, love one another as I have loved you. And that was a whole chapter before. And then Jesus foretells Peter's going to deny him. And I think we all sit here and think, sure, I would never do that. And then we all do it. But that's what happened in chapter 13. Then chapter 14, Jesus tells his disciples that he is the way and the truth and the life. He lets his disciples know that he is the only way that you're going to get through this life in one piece. And then Jesus also promises them that the Holy Spirit is coming. Now remember, this is before he was crucified and rose again. And he's telling them all these things. He's trying to prepare them for what's coming. And then when we get to chapter 15 today, where Jesus speaks about the vine and the branches, we just see it all coming together. And there's a real sense of urgency in Jesus' words. If you look at how much he packs into a few little talks that he has with his disciples. There's a sense of urgency because he knows he's got very little time left to finish explaining to his disciples. And if you think about it, the disciples heard all of these stories for the first time, and they heard them kind of once. You know, you and I have probably heard this story 20 times, and we've processed it, and someone's explained it, and there's been a sermon about it. But these guys had to sort of take all this and take it in all at once. So there was really a sense of Jesus trying to pack in as much as he could into these verses. And what does he do when he speaks to his disciples? Is he paints a picture that is a common thing. He doesn't give them great theological terminology. He gives them a common thing that they probably walk past every day. He gives them a picture of a vine and the branches. Jesus knows that life after his death and resurrection is going to be difficult. And he's trying to prepare his disciples for that. They need to hear the words that he's saying in this passage as much as you and I do today. I'm going to go through it kind of verse by verse just to see what God has said to us. We need to hear these words because we need to be prepared to move forward always. We can't sort of retreat and go back and like Jim spoke about last week, go back to the fishing boat and, and just sort of backtrack because we, it's all too much. We need to keep on moving forward. And he says this, he says, I'm the true vine and my Father is the gardener. Jesus wants us to know that God, his Father, 
is actually the caretaker. If you think of a gardener, it's not somebody who just willy-nilly throws water on things. A gardener is someone who cares for plants, who prunes them, who takes little bits off, who makes sure there's no bugs, who makes the ground nice underneath them. A gardener is a very caring term. And Jesus says to his disciples that he is the vine and his father is the gardener looking after all of us. The one who looks after every single aspect of our growth. Friends, if we look at God and we approach God as our caretaker rather than a grumpy disciplinarian, which I think many of us have kind of put him in a box already, if we look at God as our caretaker, then perhaps we'll find it easier to accept the love that he offers us. It's very easy to say all that love stuff sounds wonderful, but it's not for me. I've still done things that are wrong, and I'm, I'm still like in God's bad books, and one day when I'm good enough, that's not who God is. God is the caretaker. He's saying, I love you exactly as you are. My mom used to look after pot plants, and she could take a little stick of something out of the ground and turn it into a plant. I do the opposite. <laughs> I can take a plant and turn it into nothing. But she was able to take these tiny little, she, she I don't know what bread, I don't know, little African violets. Anybody here have African violets? You can break a leaf off and stick it in the sand and look after it and it grows. You know, that's the image I have. It's just that care and that love and looking after it every day and making sure it's got water. That's how God is with our souls and our spirits. And then it says, He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. Well, every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes, so they'll be even more fruitful. These are not pleasant, pleasant things. Have you seen when they prune the roses outside here? Hey, you've got this whole rose bush, and then what happens? We don't just take the flowers off. They take half the rose bush off. And we know that's what needs to happen so that it will bear more flowers later. And it's the same with grapes. If you've seen the, the vines, and once they've taken all the grapes off, they prune them right off. It's just little sticks waiting for the next season of grapes to come in. It's tough to hear. And maybe we're going around our daily lives and there are parts of who we are or what we do that really need to be pruned. Maybe there are things that we are not getting to, but are not being fruitful enough because we're just not taking the time to get rid of all those extra things that we don't need in our lives. And if for God being the gardener, he says he'll cut those parts off. And it doesn't speak about negotiation. It doesn't speak about, I will talk nicely to you and maybe we can cut those parts off. He says, if you're in me, like the vine is in the branch and the branch is in the vine, if you are in me, then I will do things in your life that will take those horrible bits away from you. Sometimes it's a relationship. Sometimes it's a habit. Sometimes it's a geographical place you're in. All these things that just make it difficult for us to bear more fruit. If we ask God to guide us, he sometimes just takes those things away. It might be a little bit painful and scary, but if we trust that God knows what he's doing, which I personally do because I think he's got a much better idea than I do, then we know that he takes some of those things away from us so that we can bear even more fruit for us. He knows what's good for us and what's bad for us, and he knows that we'll be better off without certain things. As we sit here this morning, maybe you and I can think of habits that we have that are not good, things that need to be cut out of our lives. But we just haven't had the energy or the guts or the, or the motivation to do that. It's kind of like dragging a dead branch along with you when God knows you need to let go. Then in relationship with God, we are challenged to look at those parts of our lives and our lives as Christ followers where we could be doing better. So some of the branches he's just going to chop off and throw away needs to take certain things out of our lives to make our lives better, and other things he needs to prune. And if you look at somebody who's pruning, and we had a gardener who, quite a short guy, and everything in the garden was kind of pruned at his heart. Um, <laughs> and we didn't ever ask him, because we're not great gardeners, but we would get home one day, and all the trees were kind of James' heart. We're like, okay, so James has been pruning. But the next year, they were all taller and better, so he knew what he was doing. But when we get pruned, it, it kind of feels a bit anal. Sometimes there's some wounds, it's a bit raw. There's things that have been kind of chopped off and we, don't, we kind of want the old stuff back. But God is the one who says, I'm going to prune those things. I'm not pruning them to make you look pretty. I'm pruning them to make you bear more fruit because that's what we're here to do. Pruning refines the shape of a plant 
And if God is pruning things out of our lives, it focuses us onto what he wants us to do. Pruning strengthens. Have you ever had any of those funny rose bushes that grow that you just leave them going in the garden? And this one little stick goes up forever. It's not very strong. First wind and it's down on the ground. It's not strong because it hasn't been pruned. It hasn't been kept in the shape that it needs to be kept in. So pruning strengthens who we are and helps us to focus. And it shapes us and it molds us. And friends, it's not going to be comfortable. I don't think any rose bush is like, yeah, it's pruning day. You know, I think they're quite glad <laughs> when it's over. But it's what they need. It might be uncomfortable. We might have to change some things in our lives. It might be that we need pruning to manage the next chapter of our life because we can't take all this extra baggage with us. We might need to do some soul searching and to devote our time and talents to just that one thing that God is calling us to. So maybe we're doing 10 really good things for God, but he's really calling us to one. And we need to prune off the others so that we can strengthen and bear more fruit where he wants us to be. I think that each one of us here has an idea of what needs cutting off, or what needs pruning in our lives. And if you're not sure, spend some time in prayer and in the scriptures and listen for God's voice always telling you what you need to do for him. And his plan for you for the next step, we sang that song, step by step you'll lead me. We can't take more than one step at a time, you'll fall. You can only take one step at a time. And God will be there every single step of the way. And so if we ask for his guidance one step, and then we ask for his guidance for the next step, and for the next step, he will continue to guide our paths all the time. And then it says that lovely thing. It says, you're already clean because of the word that I've spoken to you. This message was not for newbies. This message wasn't for people that had never heard about God and Jesus. This message was given to his disciples. So they knew quite a bit about what was going on. It was for those who are already Christ followers. And friends, I, I assume and I hope that many of us here this morning have a relationship with God. And so these words are for us. They're for the slightly more mature Christian and not just for the brand new one. God's word is constant and we all recognize it because of our relationship with him. If you're hearing God speak to you, ask him to make sure it's him and he will. If you don't believe that it's God speaking to you, he'll speak to you again. And he'll say the same thing again in a different way. He wants you to hear his voice. So if you just take time to listen, you're going to hear it. And then it says this very important part. He says, remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. That is just the relationship that he's talking about. So Jesus is saying to his disciples, he's saying to you and me, stay close to me, be where I am, and then together we'll bear lots of fruit. But you can't go off on your own and pretend to be the most wonderful Christian without being close to Jesus. There are many good people in the world who are not Christ followers, and they burn out very quickly because it's hard to do the things that we need to do in this world without walking closely with Jesus. And this remain in me and I will remain in you is the crux of the whole passage. Jesus knew he was not going to be around for much longer. And friends, you and I have never seen Jesus in the flesh. <laughs> These guys had, and they were already being warned. And so we are being given that same challenge. Jesus knew there were going to be many, many challenges for his disciples in the days to come. And if you read through the, the after the Gospels, you read into Acts and you read into the letters, and you read into the rest of the New Testament, those disciples had a tough life. But are we not glad that they endured? Are we not glad that they did what they were told to do? Because 2,000 years later, here we are, because of those guys. They took the challenge and did what they needed to do. He was urging us to stay close to him, and to be so close and dependent on him as a branch is for its own nourishment, in order to bear fruit. We can't be Lone Ranger Christians. You don't get single grapes growing on a vine. He didn't use the image of an apple tree. <laughs> he used a bunch of grapes that were together. That is the fruit that we bear. It would be a bit odd if you walked past a grapevine and there was just little single grapes hanging. Huh? It would be very weird. <laughs> but it's not like that because that's not how nature intended it. Grapes hang off of the same branch and they hang in bunches. 
And here is a nice big bunch. <laughs> We're all hanging together on the same branch, connected to the same vine, because that's what it's all about. Friends, we need each other. We need the whole bunch in order to bear the fruit that this world needs. We're not just called to be nice people, but we are called to bear the fruit of Jesus. And that fruit that Jesus bears is his character. And that's what we are hoping to become more like Jesus every day. And so the fruit that we are wanting to develop and bear and bring into the world is things like love. <laughs> it sounds easy, but to love everybody is not easy. Things like compassion. And not just compassion for people who look and sound and are exactly like you and I, but having compassion for all the people that God put on this planet. It's about having mercy, forgiving people, understanding each other, understanding those who are not like us. In fact, understanding those that are like us too. What about accepting every person that you meet without judging? We don't ask for a CV when we meet somebody at an event or in a shop or at a petrol station. We don't ask for their CV. We just automatically show them who we are by what we do. This fruit that we bear can be giving our time and attention to those who need it. And as we know with children, sometimes those that need the most attention are not the ones that ask in the nicest way. Um, and they need the attention. And there are many adults. It's not just about being attention-seeking, but sometimes just spending an hour or two with somebody who is alone is a huge gift to that person. What about being in a conversation with a friend and not looking at your phone? Just giving them your full attention and the time that you have to spend with them. Friends, we need to be so close to Jesus that others will see him through us. You see, if we're growing on that branch, the fruit is right there, but we're so close to the vine that we start to look like the branch itself. It says this, I'm the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit, because apart from me, you can do nothing. Harsh words, and there are many of us who sit here and think, well, I'm pretty self-sufficient. There's quite a lot I can do on my own. But actually, if we're to do God's work, we can't do it on our own. We're not going to make it on our own. Jesus was urging his disciples, those men that had walked alongside him for three years, that they didn't, didn't need to be on their own. He wanted them to stick together. Remember when he sent them out, they went in twos. Jesus wanted his disciples even to be close to each other. Jesus is promising us that he will remain close to us and urging us to always remain close to him. Jesus knows them and he knows us, and he knows we're not going to get very far all by ourselves. Then says, if you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up and thrown into the fire and burned. And that's quite a harsh thing, but isn't that what we do when we cut off branches of trees? We don't leave them in a nice little pile, or well, some of us do until somebody takes it away, but um, <laughs> we don't leave branches just sitting in a pretty pile. We get rid of them. They have no use anymore. And so that's what it is about. You need to be bearing fruit for God. That is his relationship with us. If we stop spending time with Jesus, if we lose our connection with him, then we will not thrive. We will not do well. There have been times in my life when I've felt very far away from God, and the connection has felt very tenuous. And sometimes even felt like it's not there. You know what it's like to be praying and it feels like it's bouncing off the ceiling? You don't want to be there. Friends, stay close to God. Remain in him and he will remain in you. It's a promise. It's a covenant. He's not saying stay close to me and if I've got time, I'll be with you. He says stay with me and I'll stay with you. That's who he is. We'll be pushed aside and ultimately destroyed, either by our own behavior or by the behavior of those who want to hurt us. And then it says to, to the disciples, it says, If you remain in me, my words remain in you. Ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. Now that sounds a little bit like a fairy godmother, but it's not. If you're so close to God and you're in tune with what he wants for your life and what you want for your life with him, then the things you ask him for are going to be things that he really wants to give you. You're not going to ask him for a Ferrari and get cross if he doesn't give it to you. When you're walking close with God, you're going to be asking him for very simple relationship things. And that's what it's about. If you remain in Jesus, spending time with him daily, learning, growing, following him in everything we do, then it becomes easy to ask. 
and we will be guided by what is best for us. We'll be in a place we can openly and boldly ask God for those things that we want. And then he says, this is to my Father's glory, that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. Our work here on earth is to bear fruit. The only way we can do that is through Jesus. Our purpose as Christ followers is to become more like Jesus every day, growing those characteristics that we see. And if you're not sure what those are, spend some time in the New Testament reading through the gospel. See what kind of guy Jesus was. That's who we want to be like. And if you're growing closer to God all the time, you'll become like that. And then he finishes the passage off with a lovely little um, paragraph on love itself. And it says this, As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you'll remain in my love, just as I've kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. I've told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. How wonderful does that sound? My joy will be in you and your joy will be complete. He wants us to be happy. This is not a slog. This is not a task-oriented thing. It's a joy because we're wanting to serve the God that we love. And he says this, Greater love has no one than to lay his life down, than to lay one's life down for one's friends. And they didn't quite understand that part, but we do. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I've called you friends for everything that I've learned from my father I've made known to you. You did not chose me, but I chose you. Friends, God loved us first. We didn't go searching for him and he was off running away. He wasn't. He was always right there. He loved us first and all he's ever wanted is for us to love him back in that relationship with him. Everything that I learned from my Father I've made known to you. You did not choose me, I chose you and appointed you so that you may go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. And, that, and so that whenever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. This is my command. Love each other. It sounds easy, doesn't it? Love each other. Love God, love others. It sounds really easy and maybe. What if it actually just is that easy? What if we stopped judging each other? What if we respected the people we came into contact with straight off? What if we stopped focusing on ourselves and focused on showing God's love to others? Maybe it is just that easy. Love each other. And I have had the privilege of being part of this community for seven and a half years, and I've experienced much love, and I hope that others have experienced the same amongst ourselves. It's been a community where people are accepted, where people are loved, where people are prayed for, where people are supported. And that's what the kingdom of God is about. We're that same little bunch of grapes hanging on the vine, and everybody in that, those grapes get along quite well. And so continue to love each other, because that's what he commanded. Jesus is the vine, rooted in God's love. Jesus is that vine. We are the branches, and we are only alive when we are close to that vine. If we move away, we're not going to make it. And our hands and our feet and our mouths bear the fruit of God's love in this world. So let's carry on being good grapes in this community and finding some more to come and join us. Let's pray. I wish it seemed. Thanks. Father God, thank you for this time that we can hear your words, that, Lord, we can hear your heart, that we can know how much you really want us to be in relationship with you. Thank you, Jesus, that you are the one who makes that relationship possible. And thank you that we can come as forgiven and loved people into your presence. Lord, we know that you have a plan for each one of us. And Lord, we know that you want us to stay close to you. And so, Father, I pray that in this week, each one of us here will feel your presence and will draw closer to you every day. In Jesus' name, amen. Please, will you stand and join us as we sing? Let's bless one another as we say the benediction together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen.